at that time too. Um, I uh, teach uh, obviously voice, um, also song literature and opera literature courses. And I was an opera singer for 15 years, most of that in Germany. So that's why my interest today is also helping you to interpret your pieces. Um, and uh, Dr. Christopher can talk more about his, who he is and his background, and then we'll get going with Mark because we don't want to waste time. Yes, let's not waste time. I'm Ted, please call me Ted. I direct opera at Penn State. My background, like, like Professor Trost's, is uh, as a performing artist. However, I also have directed professionally, uh, as well as academically at Penn State University and the Eastman School of Music and the University of Memphis. So I'm glad to be with you all, and I'm looking forward to hearing you sing. So why don't we launch right in uh, with Mark? Hello, um, I'm Mark. Hi, Mark. Could you do you mind Hi, telling us what, what you'd like to sing today? Uh, I'll be singing uh, Dare Atlas by Schubert. Fantastic. Whenever you are ready. I apologize. I wasn't able to get my hands on a speaker, so I'm not sure how audible the accompaniment will be. That is fine. As long as you can hear it. That's the important thing. All right. I want to invite everybody to unmute themselves and clap. <laughs> Mark, Mark, Mark. <laughs> All right, now mute yourself and mute yourself. I hope I just didn't screw up the classical singer thing. Uh, okay, Mark, thank you. Thank you for singing for us. Very, I appreciate that very much. Um, tell me a little bit about this song for you. Is this a new song or is this a song you've been working on for a long time? Um, this song is fairly new. I probably started working on it around two months ago. Uh, I started prepping it for my college auditions. Fantastic. Fantastic. Um, do you sing a lot in German or is this kind of a new thing for you? Um, I sang more in Italian, but I sang a bit in German. Which do you like better, Italian or German? Uh, it kind of depends on what I'm saying. Well, yes, I guess that would be true, wouldn't it? Yeah. I like I like listening to Wagner, but I don't do Wagner, so I prefer singing Italian right now. <laughs> Are you in high school? Yeah, so I, I'm staying away from that stuff. <laughs> no, no high school kid does Wagner. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If you remember nothing else I tell you today, remember don't that. Do Wagner. <laughs> it's yeah. totally, totally cool to listen to Wagner. I love Wagner. I, in fact, just a couple of weeks ago, 
uh, here in State College on Saturdays, we get uh, WQXR, uh, which is the New York City classical station. And, and they've been running their Saturday operas are these great archive recordings because they're, they're not live, of course, right yeah. now. And just a couple of weeks ago, it was Tristan and Isolde from like 2017 or 2016 with uh, Stuart Skelton and, uh, oh, what was her name? The Isolde, it's fantastic, fantastic. Venus Stone? Yes, 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 exactly, exactly. And Rene Collo, I think was, mm -hmm. uh, was, but anyway, it was, you know, I was yeah. doing the dishes in my kitchen around one in the afternoon. And I said to my wife, I'll see you in five hours. So anyway. Yeah. So Mark, good. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that with me. So the theme of what Jennifer Trost and I want to talk about, and this is for everybody, not just for you, but we want to talk about being an acting singer, right? Um, you know, there's a lot, there's a lot we can do. There's a lot we can work on. We can work on tone. We can work on, on text and pronunciation, but our job right now is to talk about tools that you can use to help you give a compelling performance, all right? And hopefully things that you can apply to this song, to other pieces you're working on, um, and really anything you sing, anything you sing, because anybody who sings is acting. You're playing a part, right? Even if you're singing leader uh, or French art song or English art song that, that's not necessarily in an opera, but maybe is just a song, right? It's still a character. It's still a, um, a, uh, a narrative. Yeah, and by narrative, I mean basically a story. Um, and it still has a, has, a, has a point of view or a context, right? Mm. I mean, you know, all of those things go into anything you would ever do as a singer, okay? So the, what I encourage my students to do especially when they're working on recital rep, actually, like this song would be, you know, the Atlas is something maybe you'd sing on a recital. It's not something that you would ever do, you know, staged. But you can still do this work and it can still be really, really effective. OK, mm -hmm. so do you mind just sort of playing with me for just a, a little short while about that and see if any of this stuff resonates with you and is stuff you can use? OK, so like I said, you're a character and you have a point of view, all right? So do you feel really, do you, first of all, I should just ask, do you feel confident enough with the text that it's translated and in your brain and kind of working, or do you need to like have music in front of you or have the score in front of you? Because that's uh, totally fine. I feel pretty confident. Not, not the, I, I could pull it up on my computer though. Well, because the, the only reason I'm asking is this is really important to the work I'm gonna encourage you to do. Yeah. Is, for, is to really know the word, understand the words. And of course, we all know as singers, right, guys, whenever we sing a piece in a foreign language, that is like the first step. The first step is learn the text, right? And learn it clearly, unless you're fluent in German, fluent in French, fluent in Italian, extra step you have to take, right? Crucially important, crucially important. Um, so cool. The question I would ask is, so there are actually three. So as the singer of the song, as the character performing the song, what do you want? What do you want in the song? There's got to be some reason why you're singing. And, and you know, it can be what Mark wants. Like Mark wants to sing really, really well and beautifully and impress everybody and have people like him. That's great. I love that. But that can't be what, what, this, what the character wants. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, what do I want? I want to get out of here, you know? You know, but no, what do I want? Every, every song has that, okay? Every song has some need in it. Some character, uh, every character has some need embedded in the character. Crucial first question, what do I want? Okay, just think about that. Second question, once you've figured out the first question, the answer or some ideas about the, the first question, what is standing in my way? Because if what you want is achievable, like, oh, got it. I want to, you know, I want to pick up this blue glass and have a drink of water. Okay, problem solved. There's no drama, right? The drama is I want to pick up that blue glass and have a drink of water, but I can't. There's a reason why I, I don't know why, but I can't. Okay. What's standing in my way? Okay. So what do I want? 
what's standing in my way. All right. Hmm. And again, you got to answer that question before you start singing. I mean, you got to at least answer it in your brain. And again, no right or wrong. This is this is you to be creative, right? Seriously, like a like a blue glass, you know. So once you figure that out, number three, question number three is what am I going to do about it? All right. That's action. That is an action. Okay. Think of it this way. Um, think, think of it like, think of it like a construction like this. You're speaking to someone. It's literally I, and then there's a verb, and then there's you. Object, subject, verb. You know what I'm saying? Grammar 101. You didn't know there'd be grammar on this, did you? All right. Anyway, I blank you. Okay. Blank is the action. Okay. I love you. I hate you. I punch you. I embrace you. I run away from you. I mean, anyway, the point being that is the action. And that is actually what you're doing in the song while you're singing the song. That's the action of the song. You with me? Yeah. So Here's what I want you to do. I am totally going to answer this for you. I'm going to streamline this. I'm going to be like, boom, boom, boom. And I want you to sing the song one more time. Okay. Trying to do this action. Okay. okay. All right. So what do I want? Okay. I want somebody that's on the other side of that window right behind you. See that window right behind you? Yeah. There's somebody outside that window and you want to get their attention. Okay. What's standing in your way? The window is standing in your way. They can't hear you. All right. So what are you going to do about it? You're going to shout. You're going to make a great big physical presence and noise. And you're going to, and you're going to beg. You're going to beg for the window to disappear. All right. Three things. Shout, bang on the window, beg for the window to disappear. Don't literally break the window, please. I don't know where don't, you don't are. Don't bang on the window. Got it. All right, you got it. Can you do those three things for me? Yeah. Try it again. Shout See out. the person outside the window. See them. Go ahead and start the song. Get her attention, get her attention. Okay, so Mark, did, was that different for you? Did that feel different? Yeah, a little bit. A little bit different. I think you could go further. Yeah. I think you could go further, right? Mm. I think you can go further with that, but I think this is the beginning to understanding the possibilities that exist in this song, okay? Mm. Obviously, this is not the what do I want, what's standing in my way, what am I going to do about it solution to Der Atlas, 
<laughs> right? I mean, I don't know, maybe, maybe. Bang on the window. <laughs> but, but it is suffused with intention then. It's full of intention, right? Makes a much more interesting performance. All right? Mm. Thank you yeah, for saying that. Thank you. Thank you. I'm just going to say a quick comment. I felt like your second time was more urgent, Mark, and that makes that that very heavy song for Schubert um, even even stronger. I would say, you know, talking about your sorrows and how you, you know, you chose this to to love or not to love, right? So um, wonderful. I, I I love how you're embodying that. Thank you. So um, let us all unmute and give um, Mark some applause and also give Audrey applause as she comes in. <laughs> all right, Audrey, tell us what you're going to sing. I will be singing, Will There Really Be a Morning by Ricky Ian Gordon. <laughs> um, um, and since there's a repeat in the song, do you want me to just do the second verse for a time? Um, I'd love you to sing the whole piece once through, and then if we need to jump around later, we can. Okay, great.
Beautiful. Let's all give her a little applause there. I love this piece too. Lots of people love it in the chat. Woo! Who is your pianist? Tell us. Um, my lovely mother. I'm Hello, very... Mrs. Bailey. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> very nice. Thank you. Um, the reason I had you sing the whole piece is because you had a whole repetition of text, right? And right. so then we have to decide emotionally what happens, what's the difference, you know, when you're doing it. Now, how long have you lived with this piece? I've had this piece for March. since March. Four okay, since also not a very long time, but yeah. beautifully done. Thank you. So even though this is in English, we also have to interpret it text-wise, right? Mm -hmm. And I think Emily Dickinson is kind of hard to understand sometimes. I agree. <laughs> so what do you think this piece is about? Um, I think that this piece is about someone asking if there is like a light at the end of the tunnel, if there's like ever going to be an end to feeling so hopeless and so like down on themselves and so hurt. Wow, that is great. I thought you were going to go for something, you know, like beautiful nature or something like that, <laughs> but it really has much more depth. And I think the the way you've interpreted it is probably similar to Emily Dickinson, because if you ever read about her, she was pretty isolated, you know, and yeah. um, and so I think I think that's great. Maybe that's even a song for the recent year we've all been through, you know, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, how do you think the second time through is different from the first time through? I think the first time she's like she's seeing a little bit of hope she's seeing like oh it's possible it's possible that there could be a light and she's like kind of dipping her toe in kind of like seeing like maybe this could be something and then i feel like especially because over the second repeat like the first um notation over it is more intense i think that yes yeah i think that definitely this person is feeling much more like pleading and begging like Okay, now that I've gotten like a taste of this, I really need it to be real. Yeah, and, and then when you're singing, oh, some scholar, uh, oh, some sailor, it's quite high there in the second time through, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's sort of an outburst. Yeah. Right? And are these people who have the answer for you? What, why do you talk about them? Hmm. I think that like a lot of the themes in this are like, is it, is it something that I just don't know about because I am so small and so like not a part of the world? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I think that she's like going to those people of like people of the world who've like seen a lot of things and being like, is this something that everybody knows and I just don't know? Great. Yeah. And so kind of following what Dr. Christopher said was what do you want? I don't know release from what I'm struggling with. I don't necessarily know what that is. Well, and so maybe you should create um, a background that way for yourself. Like what, what do you want release from? Or what do you want an answer for, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. um, so that will make it more intense. Plus this song has a pretty long interlude, doesn't it, between the verses? Yes. <laughs> and that's hard to fill too. So do you have ideas in your head, maybe even pictures or text or something that, that interprets that part of the song? Hmm. I, I feel like a lot of that song is like transitioning from like the hopeful first verse to like the more like pleading in the second verse and like how you do that, like what motivates that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I haven't come up with specifics for it. <laughs> <laughs> and I really would, you know, um, yeah. I mean, maybe they're descriptive of, of something. I mean, you're talking about a lot of things in nature, you know, um, maybe it's even a mountain or something that you're looking up at or something, you know, or maybe it's the heavens or, or maybe you're looking for these people that can help you, you know, um, solve this question. Yeah. So I would definitely make, uh, listen to the music and find where the drama is in that music, maybe even where things are slightly pictorial 
if it goes higher, maybe that's maybe that you're looking up higher for the answer, you know, or, or down low. It's like, where, where do I go? Where do I find this? You know, mm -hmm. so I think that would be great. And I agree in the chat that silence is really important in, in art song, but we have to keep interpreting it. Now, here's an old fashioned idea. Let's pretend that you're the stereo system and um, you're the speakers for that system. So even the things that your mother is playing have to go through you for us to hear it. Okay. Yeah. So you have to be the channel for everything about this piece. Okay. So what do you think about starting with the interlude okay. and trying to give us an interpretation and then sing that second verse with a great deal of, of intensity um, and, and really have an outburst there when you're way up high, right? Okay. And, and, let, and don't be afraid to go too far. It's so easy. If someone doesn't go far enough, you'll never correct, you'll never get what you want. If they okay. go too far, you can say, oh, let's just pull that back a little bit, right? Right, yeah. Here we go. Thank you both. What was that like to get more intense that last time? Um, it was really interesting. I was really like feeling and understanding like how the vocal line and the accompaniment like flowed together to create yes. a story. Yeah, because yeah. like I feel like a lot of the intent and emotion is more in the accompaniment than in the words I'm saying. And that's why you have to interpret it. Now I got to move on. I'm getting the net notice that we've gone long enough, but um, <laughs> work on that you're so lucky to have your pianist right there and and notice in your um um uh interlude there's a big rolled chord and stuff there's something happens there and you've got these these phrases that you're singing anyways so you know find out how to interpret those mm -hmm. well done audrey well done both Thank um you. applause for audrey and also applause for lauren as she comes in All right. Hello. I'm Lauren. I'm today I'm going to sing Stizoso Mio Stizoso from La Serva Padron by Giovanni Pergolesi. Thank you. 
Thank you, Lauren. Thank you for singing for us. Everybody unmute, say woohoo! That, that, that poor schlump you work for never knew what hit him, okay? <laughs> so, listen, since we're so pressed for time, I am totally just gonna cut to the chase right here, okay? If I was working with you in person, this is exactly what I would do too. I would wanna stage this aria. We're gonna stage it. So I'm looking at the room you're in, and I'm wondering, is there a piano bench back there that you can go grab and pull around the piano? Yes. Is that possible? Yeah. Okay. No stress. Take your time. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great dress. Sorry to make you like. Okay. And I want you to kind of put it kind of just over to the side, kind of just over to the one side. Okay. Lower the camera just a little bit, kind of tilt the camera forward just so I can see more, more of it. Perfect. Okay, so put that over there, and, and there's a chair right there, right? I'm looking at a chair like on your left side. Yes. Can you turn that chair around and have it face the piano bench, kind of like I did here? You got a chair here and a chair there. Yeah. Okay. Now I want you to sit on the piano bench, and I want you to face the chair, and I want you to put him there. He's in the chair. Got it. Okay. This guy is a is a moron. You cannot <laughs> stand him. You are making fun of him. Okay. I want you to be constantly saying that to him. All right. You are having a huge unload of everything you've pent up for so long that you wanted to say to him. You're finally saying it to him. Okay. Got it. And I want you to basically stay here, okay? Basically stay right here and sing the song right to that guy right there, okay? And maybe you can stand up, okay? Mm -hmm. Maybe you can stand up and maybe you can kind of get in his face this way. That yeah. way, every once in a while if you want to, but mainly those are your only two choices, okay? okay. Can you give it a shot? Sure. Oh, me, Thank you. 
was so, I'm sorry to stop you. I actually tried to stop you like two times. I tried to stop you two times and you couldn't hear me because you were going and you were in it. And I love that. I totally, oh, yeah, sorry about that. Totally love that. So listen, this is, did you, did you just pause the recording? You didn't, like, yes. you just paused it. Yes. Fantastic. So here's the last thing I want you to do. This is our last little like threading of the needle. Okay. okay. Just go back to where you were standing. Okay. Turn that chair kind of so that it's back is sort of like that to the camera so that when I'm singing to the chair, you can see me straight out. Okay. Got it. And sing the, sing the da capo like that. But don't change a thing. Oh, I love that. There, it's like the, it's like what the, the audience is him. <laughs> Fantastic, right there. Okay, there Got he it. is. I love everything you're doing. Keep doing it. Don't change a thing. Just face out. Okay, perfect. Just give yourself a button, give you a button in that little piano, in that little or orchestral postlude. La da dum, ba ba bum, ba. I don't know. Like maybe he tries to talk to you one more time, and you're just like, no, no, I don't want to hear another thing, not from you. Some yeah. some, some sort of button, right? Can yeah. you just talk for thirty seconds about how that was different for you, or if it was different for you? Yeah, it felt a lot different. It felt a lot more focused. I guess you could say, like. It didn't feel like it was as much all over the place. It still felt like it had those, this like the same kind of acting choices that I was going for when I did it the first time, but it felt like it had more of a placement. Like as before, I was like, I don't know where I should be looking, but I had more, it was more centered and it felt more powerful that way. Fantastic, I totally agree. We are at time, but thank you so much for singing for us. Thank you. Everyone on mute, we applaud one more time. Woo! And Lauren and Woo! Amanda's coming Woo! up next. Hi, Amanda, what are you going to sing for us? Hello, I'm Amanda Garcia, and I will be singing Kill Bel Sogno di Doretta by Puccini.
Everyone on mute, give a big applause. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you, thank you, everybody. <laughs> so tell us about this aria. How long have you been working on it? I've been working on it for about four or five months, maybe, yeah. Okay, all right. And have you, well, who's the character? Who's singing this? I am Magda and I am a mistress. Um, I, well, it says mistress, but I read other places that she's like a, a lady of the night. <laughs> uh, um, and so, yeah, that's who I am in this song or in this opera. So this is Doretta's beautiful dream, basically, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And it's very passionate, right? Um, that, you know, she one day a student kisses her, right? And all of a sudden she's in love and everything, right? And when you get up to the folle amore and the folle berezza, um, you know, that's very sustained and high, but that's really kind of really the intense part in some ways, isn't it? Mm -hmm. What are you saying there, folle amore? Uh, frenzied love and frenzied rapture. Okay, okay. And, and then like a subtle caress comes afterwards so from such a, how could you describe such a flaming kiss, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. So this is really super um, activated language, isn't it? Yes, yes. And so I was gonna say this earlier to, to Lauren too, you know, when you go get outside of your, your technique and you really invest yourself more and more in your interpretation and you trust your, your, your techniques there and then you can go beyond that for your interpretation, it often enhances both, right? Yeah. So is it mean for me to have you start on the folle and just make that, Crazy in love. Okay. For a sec. So personally, I felt you were more invested in it this time. Is that true? Yeah, I felt like that too. I felt more, I guess I also feel more free because I sometimes feel like I'm supposed to just be right here in this mm -hmm. place, <laughs> you know, so. <laughs> well, do you think that when Magda is telling this story, is Magda relating this to anything she herself has experienced? Yes, yes, she remembers. Uh -huh. Yeah, she rem she's remembering a time in her life where she experienced that. Yeah, so even though she's telling Doretta's story, she's personalizing it too, I would think, right? Yes. Uh -huh. Oh, excellent. And I love that when you can do um, sing with abandon. <laughs> Now, you know, um, this is this we're going so fast in this master class, we haven't really had time to, you know, investigate various things. But, um, you know, what's interesting sometimes to find more um, intensity in a piece is sometimes to go against 
what uh, is in the music or, or emotionally. So what if you sang this part as if you were angry? How would that change your, your interpretation? It certainly would be intense. Mm -hmm. But let's see what happens, what anger will do all of a sudden. Okay. Just that part that you sang to me already. blowing us away on your on your microphone way to go oh. so no how did that change for you it just felt more energized and yeah more i guess even vocally it was more full and powerful it was more consistent vocally it seemed to me easier in some ways is that true i don't mean to put words in your mouth yeah 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 in some ways it was mm -hmm. So sometimes it's fun to play with pieces, maybe make up some flashcards or something and, 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 you know, every, every eight bars or 16 bars or whatever, you know, oh, I have to sing this uh, with joy. Oh, I have to sing this with sorrow. Oh, I'm giggling here or whatever, you know, and sometimes it brings up um, things that you can actually use then, you know, yeah. wow, that was great. Thank you, everyone. Let's give um, Amanda applause here. And actually, let's applaud all our singers today and pianists. <laughs> so I don't know, Allie, do we have time for a little Q&A? Um, we have, if you guys want to, we can take about like five minutes if anybody has any questions. Ask away. Um, you can raise your hand or put something in the chat, whatever you would like to do. Or maybe you don't have questions. Alina, did I see you raising your hand? Yeah, sorry. I, she said, sorry. <laughs> um, okay, so I, I have a difficult time um, understanding my hard palette. And I would just really love some insight on the hard palette and how to use it correctly because I've always been told I have a very good mix, but I want to learn how to tune into my chest. Ooh, that's interesting. Should I take that, Ted, or do you want to? Well, you know, she's asking the queen of the hard palate. Right? I don't know <laughs> if you all know this or not, but Jennifer Trost is renowned for her, for her commentary on the hard palate. Well, I love to talk about the palate. Um, the truth is that the hard palate doesn't move because it's all bone. And so it's the soft palate that moves. But I do have to admit when I'm singing, I often feel like I'm aiming for the hard palate and it feels like it's lifting. Now that has to do with creating space and in some ways helping you to keep your sound forward. But I don't know that it's necessarily involved with the mix. 
because in the mix, you're making a choice um, between the muscle groups, the, the, the cricothyroid or the thyroarytenoid, you know, and so the, the thyroid, thyroarytenoid, the, the, the TA is for your chest voice and the CT is for your head voice. And so you're making a choice as to which group is having more influence on your sound. However, also in musical theater, you want to have a forward sound and the lift can help you as well. Yeah, and that's exactly, you know, what I'm, I'm aiming for. I'm, I'm a musical theater singer, but I figure I try and come to this class and work with you guys because you guys have all that classical background to help me with the anatomy piece of it. Mm -hmm. um, so what you're saying with the hard palate um, is essentially it's further up in the mask. Yeah, if you take your tongue from the, the back of your top teeth and take it all the way backwards uh, along the roof of the mouth, you'll notice that it's hard and then all of a sudden it changes and becomes soft in the back. Mm -hmm. So the hard palate's the hard part and the soft palate's the soft part. And if you would yawn, and I'm sure that's not hard to do at this point, do you feel the, the soft palate lifting? Yes, ma'am. So a lot of times in singing, I say, well, think of singing with a quarter yawn or a half yawn. And when we do that, it will also release the, the, um, the larynx a little bit, lower it if it's getting tight and lifting. Now in musical theater, you're, you can lift your larynx. In classical, we don't tend to do that. Mm -hmm. um, but if you have that yawn happening, then you have this, these opposites, the yin and yang kind of working to release things and to make a different acoustic. Basically, you're, you're, you're making a different shape of the singing instrument, right? Okay, someone also told me the hard palate tends to be more nasally. Is well, that now, uh, uh, I'm sorry, everyone, I, I'm talking all the way. So if your soft palate is not raised, mm -hmm. it's low, then that means the air from the throat can go up into the back of your nose and make it nasal. So often we lift the soft palate and it kind of closes the back door there and you can't put the, the air in your nose to make it nasal. Oh, that makes sense, thank you. <laughs> yeah, so too much technical information, I'm sure, but your teacher may be asking you to lift your soft palate so that you aren't sounding nasal. Okay, thank you, I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. I, I think I see Natalie's hand is raised. Um, so I had a question about the kind of the balancing of moving and finding your spatial awareness while performing art song, but then also um, being able to stand totally still and then create an affect while you are like just using your face. And I found that I struggle to know if I'm giving off that I'm to like, I know everything that's going on within my character, but sometimes, especially with the mask now, I find it, you know, they can't even see your face. So finding the ability to move and be comfortable in that, but then also where's the balance of being able to also have that effect while being totally still. And sometimes I can't tell if it's coming off as like, oh, she's not as immersed in the character or, oh, she is so comfortable within the character. She doesn't need to be doing a full dance for me to tell me what she's thinking. I would I would make two observations of what you just said. The first the, the first thing I would say is that perhaps with three out of four people that we worked with today, I think with the possible exception of Audrey, where it was much more about the text and much more about, uh, and Audrey was such an insightful person in her interpretation of the text, which is a crucial thing too, right? But I would say with the other three singers you saw today, it was almost all basically physically engaged work. It was, it was almost all about connecting physically to the, to the function of the singing, right? And so therefore, I would say to think of it as a, as a balancing act. And the second thing I would say then as a result of that is to think of it as a balancing act might be not necessarily the right way to think of it. Maybe the, a better way to think of it is, am I physically engaged in the work I am doing? And I can be physically engaged still, or I can be physically engaged as Serpina, you know, yelling at the chair, you know what I mean? Or whatever that is. And, or as Magda, you know, furiously, you know, or whatever that might be. 
um, I think sometimes we singers create a false um, a dichotomy <laughs> that there doesn't have to be one. You you should move as much as you as you as you need to move to be physically engaged in your music. You know, um, and and I I think that's the best way to approach it. And you have the repertoire of of possibilities in front of you, right? Maybe From just, I. From an in hap, I'm sorry. Sorry. Um. Maybe just more exploration and finding what's the most authentic within yourself, as because each character can be interpreted differently. So, would you say maybe more exploration, kind of like the flashcard idea, and seeing what happens organically? Always, absolutely, always. You know, we don't think about that as part of our practice necessarily as young singers or old singers for that matter. We don't think of that sort of work. We think more like placement and lift and passaggio and vowel and, you know, and it's very sort of what, what I call neck up singing, <laughs> you know? Um, okay, fine. That's one thing to do in practicing. But another thing to do in practicing is the work that you saw today. And I think it's totally valid, you know? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm mindful of the clock and I wasn't sure if anybody else had any, had any questions. I want to be sure that um, we get to things. And if you do have questions or things do occur to you, please feel like you can reach out to me or Jennifer Trost um, and we will certainly, certainly be responsive. Uh, Dr. Christopher, you're EUC11, is that right? Correct, yes. So my email at Penn State, where we, you can find us, of course, all at Penn State, but um, I am, my email is EUC11, and you are JLT. Oh, uh, oops, 29. Oops, 29. that didn't go through. Sorry. I, I did not well. type well, did I? No, 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 you did great. There, there's my real one. <laughs> All right, well, <clears throat> thank you so much. Um, unfortunately, that is all the time we have. We have to close this class out, but thank you guys all so much for coming. Real quick reminder, um, the exhibitor hall is open on Saturday from three to seven Eastern time. And also we're giving away four $100 gift cards to Amazon um, in a giveaway. So all you have to do to enter that is just post something on your story or on Instagram somewhere and just make sure to tag us and you will be entered in as many times as you post. Lastly, our new CS Music app is available for download in the App Store. Unfortunately, it's only available for Apple users, but make sure you go download that. And we're thank you guys all so much for coming. Hopefully we can see you see each other later in a different class. But Thank you so much. I'm going to go ahead. Thank and you all. It. Thank you for moderating for us, Allie. Thank oh, you to the good singers. To you guys. And <laughs> it was great. Thank you. See ya. Bye-bye.